Hello fans, fanatics, and welcome back to the Doctor Who action figure review. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I hope it goes okay. But this time, I'll be reviewing the Companions of the Fourth Doctor set, which is a part of the new 2020 B&M summer range. The figures come packed in the new Doctor Who B&M sort of heritage range, I believe they call it, with um, a slightly altered box this time. You now have the stacked version of the 13th Doctor's logo, as opposed to the last time where it was a big strip going across the front, sort of blocking the view of the figures and uh, they've also taken away the pictures of the figures on the side now having them just quite simply on the back um, we don't have any info on the characters or anything just literally who they are written at the bottom which is something that B&M have been doing for absolutely years on the inside they have this weird white and grey sort of pattern which isn't very interesting at all which is why I'm not really opening the box because if you've picked up any B&M sets over the last two years you'll pretty much know what to expect so to start off with, we have Sarah Jane Smith, as she appeared towards the end of Genesis of the Daleks and into Revenge of the Cybermen. I'll start off with by going through the articulation, because why not, it's what I usually do, and also I'm only probably only going to do it with this figure as they pretty much all have the same articulation. So the head does do a full 360 degree turn, it's not very hindered by the hair at all because it is quite short so you can do a full 360. The arms can also do a full 360 degree turn, the biceps can do 360 although they are very very stiff and the elbows can go up and down, hands can go 360 at the wrists however it is very tight and I don't want to have sort of paint rub on these hands from a, a green sort of jacket thing. Um, I think she has waist articulation that goes 360 degrees with great ease actually. Um, her legs can go forwards and out to the sides. No thigh articulation on this. She also has knee articulation and to my surprise she also has 360 degree articulation on the shoe. So now for the likeness. Does it look like Elizabeth Sladen? Um, yes I think it does. I think it is a very very good likeness. Probably the best in the set I'd say. However I must admit she does look a little bit like a monkey in certain angles. Um, I don't mean to be offensive to the actress because I'm, I can assure you Elizabeth Sladen does not look like a monkey. However, this figure just does a tiny bit in places. Although the hair sculpt is absolutely superb. I mean, they've got the hairstyle absolutely spot on from this era of Sarah Jane. I mean, it isn't that sort of longer se season 13, season 14 look. And it isn't that really short season 11 look. This is spot on for season 12. So great hair research I would do our there. And uh, my only criticism would be is it's all moulded in sort of like a flat brown, if you see what I mean. There's no sort of intricate detailing the way there is on the Romana 2. This is just all in brown, almost similar that Titan Sarah Jane that I'll just show you now. So here is the Titan Sarah Jane. This is supposed to be a caricature, so it gets away with it. But as you can see on the back, it's very similar to the back of this one. And this one's supposed to be more detailed than that, so I'm not sure what they were doing there. But it's really only a minor criticism on what is an amazing figure. Um, The jacket should be open, however, as they reused the sort of combat uniform of Martha Jones and Sound of the Drums, that isn't going to happen. But um, to be perfectly honest, they have painted the giant 70s um, sort of collars on, on like, the side here, which on the lapels, sorry, which uh, is a nice attention to detail. But I'm not going to criticise it too much. Um, a few people have said online that they should perhaps use the same body as they did on Romana 1, um, because the jacket is open on that one. However... Um, the trousers are way more accurate on this one. So imagine if they painted these sort of really thin, spindly legs um, in that sort of army sort of style of patterning. Um, it wouldn't look as good. So I am actually pleased they went with this sculpt instead of that one. But um, overall, it is an excellent figure. Um, I don't have much criticism. And yeah, it looks really, really good. Next up, we have Romana 1, as she apparently appeared in the Pirate Planet. Although she didn't really look like this in the Pirate Planet because she wasn't wearing a jacket in that story. She was wearing some sort of a shiny pink poncho thing instead with a belt sort of around the middle. However, there's been loads and loads of criticism about that online. However, I'm not really too bothered. Um, it does the trick nicely um, and you can easily tell who it's meant to be and what story they're supposed to be from. So if you're going to be that nitpicky, then just don't really bother because... It looks fine, it looks, it's a good representation, it looks better 
um, in hand. For some reason, they've sort of darkened the tone of pink, or how it looks on camera, and I can assure you it's actually much lighter in real life than this sort of electric pink, almost. And also, the head looks rather orange, um, as opposed to that sort of brown skin tone that the figure is in hand. And I'm sorry it isn't focusing. Um, I really can't do anything about that. But, um, oh, there we are. Um, it should be, yeah, basically the camera's messing it up because it does look way better in hand. Um, another criticism I have with this um, is that it's the wrong hair. This is the hair uh, that Romana had in the Armageddon Factor, I believe. I mean, it's brilliantly sculpted hair, don't get me wrong. It's got all those lovely little curls there, and they've gone over it in a sort of a lighter wash over this dark brown. However, in the Pirate Planet, um, Mary Tam had her hair almost scraped off her face um, with a sort of pink hair clip, I believe. Um, so this isn't that accurate however you can tell it's meant to be romana one the likeness is very very good actually and uh, much better than that than the, that you could sort of see online um and another thing i noticed is these sort of holes there that will, will focus i'm sorry there's nothing i can do but and um, they're actually like there's that there are actually holes i thought they were buttons originally but knew i was wrong but um yeah they also use this sculpt on um yasmin khan as well which i might get so uh yeah a really really good figure i believe the same articulation there's not much difference only oh yeah but only without the uh without the um articulation at the feet but um it is a really really good figure and really great to finally have a figure from season 16 a season that i really really enjoy and last but not least we have um Romana 2, as played by Lala Ward. Um, this is a really, really good figure. In my eyes, the best of the set, and possibly the best figure of this entire B&M range. This is absolutely brilliant, and a figure that I've been wanting for absolutely years. Um, we'll start off with the head sculpt, if it will bother to focus. I'm so sorry, I feel rubbish. But, um... If it does bother to focus, um, you'll be able to see what I mean. But as it, as for lightness, oh, there we are, for Lala Ward. I'm going to be brutally honest here. In my eyes, it looks nothing like her. I'm really, really sorry. I know character options have tried really hard here, but she looks more like Miss Piggy in my eyes than uh, Lala Ward. I just don't think... I just don't think it looks a lot like her. Um, which is a bit of a shame. The hair, however, is brilliantly sculpted, although I do have a criticism with this too. And they've sculpted it in this sort of grey-brown colour and then sort of gone over it um, in this sort of blonde colour, which is accurate. However, if they'd sculpted it in blonde and gone over it in sort of brown detailing, it would look more like they've deliberately um, gone over it in these sort of brown sort of strips as opposed to um it looks a bit unfinished the way they've sort of left bits like that i mean i get what they're going for but for me i mean if you sort of see here there's a whole section here there that they just haven't bothered to paint blonde which is a bit of a shame um and i do get what they're going for they are supposed to show the different texturing in her hair however it doesn't look deliberate it looks more like a mistake even though i'm sure it is deliberate however in my eyes it looks like a mistake if that makes any sense um but as for the costume they reuse a sarah jane smith from um sarah jane adventures um as for reusing bodies this is absolutely genius i mean apart from that sort of weird sort of belt thing at the back um this is absolutely spot on they've even gone to the amazing detail of doing the double pockets which they actually didn't do on the city of death tom baker because tom baker also has these double pockets as well but they only ever painted one for some reason on uh, on tom baker so i love that detailing they've done that on both sides you've got the lovely buttons going up there you've got these weird sort of little little focus i'm so sorry and these sort of weird little lapel holes as well they've even gone over the lapel in um pink this dark pink i'm um, ridged effect all the way down there as well oh there we are it's focusing finally and i believe the scarf is a new sculpt as well because this isn't the same scarf that is uh used on the city of death tom i mean i wouldn't have at all blamed them if they had reused that scarf sculpt however no they've actually gone to the extent of sculpting a brand new pvc piece which i shall really like uh, however again i do have a slight criticism here if the scarf is removed, well I have removed it, but I don't necessarily want to do it again. Um, as they've painted over Sarah Jane's dress to make it appear like those high-waisted trousers that um, Lala Ward wears in Destiny of the Daleks, um, which doesn't really look very good. However, that's just me being nitpicky 
and you can easily just close the coat and b bob your uncle you can't see it anymore but yeah they've the, the, the um, boot sculpt is very very good as well so yeah an excellent figure probably my favorite of the whole year's sort of range if you see what i mean but um yeah just the head is a tiny tiny bit off for me so there we have it that's the companions of the fourth doctor set just a quick round up at the end um this is an amazing set um characters that i've wanted to be to be released for absolutely ages including classic sarah jane which i can't believe they haven't done before um first figure from season 16 hooray and um a lovely lana ward romana just absolutely an amazing set um, I only ever, ever have minor criticisms with these sets, like a few problems with face sculpts and just tiny, tiny little paint smudges and things, but it's not really anything um, in comparison to all the amazing sort of great points about these. Um, have I do have one criticism that I forgot to mention with Romana 1, is that I would have loved it, because I believe they did do a new accessory for the Jadoon from Future of Jadoon, so that's so hard to say. Um, it would have been nice if they gave Romana 1 a tracer because it's like the, the key to time tracer because it's like her thing that she had throughout all of season 16 so I think it's a bit disappointing you didn't go for that however if you're like me and you're good at customising then you can always make your own I actually did make my own but it's a tiny bit too big I just think I'll show it so right here we have my custom key to time that I made um, ages ago and uh, it's even got a removable tracer that i did because i put a bit of a hole in there that's rather clever and if you just get your lovely romana one um it's a bit big because this it should be much smaller but um this is agonizing if i could just get it in her hand it roughly fits so there we are we've sort of got a romana one with tracer which i think looks really nice now and another great thing is you can even if, you, if you're like me and you've made your own season 16 15 to 17 sorry um tardis console room you can also put these figures in there um correction so i've just noticed this um you can put both romanas in there not that sarah jane because she never went in this console room so there we are there's romana one in the console room so that rounds up today's review please like comment and subscribe um i'll also be reviewing the unit 1971 the claws of axel set um coming very soon because i've also got that set the other day um i'm trying to track down more b m sets so as i track them down um you'll probably be getting reviews of them and i'll probably be doing little update videos like i did yesterday showing the ones i've managed to pick up so far so again please watch that mini video i think it's called b m success or something like that um because i've shown you the ones i've got so far even though i've just spoiled it for you um and yeah thank you very much for watching and silence in the library